Good morning. So that's the topic for today. The X-ray chest simplified. So what we'll do is, first we'll understand some of the basic principles of radiology. Right? Something which will be useful, whether we'll be, we are dealing with the X-ray chest or X-ray abdomen or X-ray skull, any of the X-rays. But when we'll be understanding those basic principles, it will be helpful to you at all levels. Right? So that is the first thing which we'll do. Second, we'll understand it from the perspective of of uh, say the atomic science right so not only that we'll be understanding that how the x-rays are produced but we'll also be understanding that uh, about how how what exactly is isotope what exactly are isomers etc the reason is later on you'll also be understanding about the mri right we'll be learning ct scan mri the basic principle which we'll be learning in first half an hour today that will be helpful at all levels right so that's the intention and then obviously today we'll be going for various x-ray chest projections along with the reason so when you will watch the x-ray you'll immediately know that this is x-ray chest pa view why it is pa view or it is ap view why it is lateral decubitus all those things will be crystal clear okay so let's start with our today's topic and thank you so much for for some very loving emails right i i i am also very thankful to you so as as you are such a good audience okay Chalo. let's start with this now see when when it comes to radiology right and in radiology the first thing is the x-rays right we must remember one person before we start anything right? because big, due to that person due to that person this whole whole department got established or whole this science it came into existence right and that is sir wilhelm conrad Ranjan. Without remembering him, actually we cannot really start this topic. Because this was the person, he was the person who discovered X-rays and that day was 8th November, 8th November, 1895. Yeah, that's the thing. And this is the day it's you need to remember because this is also considered as International Radiology Day. This is considered as International Radiology Day. So that's why it is necessary to remember this particular date. Now the story about this discovery of X-rays that is very interesting. Because actually, when when Wilhelm Conrad Ranjan, when Ranjan really discovered these X-rays, he said, Ke boss, ye hai kya? what is this? I don't know what it is. So that's why when we don't know anything, we say, Ke, okay, it is X. You know, we, we give some variable, Ke, okay, X. But so that's why from his comments, from his comments that these are some rays, but I don't know which rays are they. So that's why we I am writing it as X-rays. And that thing has been carried out since then. Right? Because what he was doing, he was working on CRT, cathode ray tube. Cathode ray tube. Right? Cathode ray tube is that is in which there is one filament. As that filament gets heated, right? There is a plate. Right? And the electrons they go and bombard on this plate and some some rays they come out now those rays they fell on a photographic plate and he was experimenting in dark so he said Kare, why this photographic plate is illuminating it is glowing that photographic plate was glowing right that photographic plate photographic plate means something which is sensitive to specific frequency of light 
right? So he said that there must be some rays, and then he named them as X rays, right? And that's why today also we are calling it as X rays. Right? I'll show you, right? And and. Uh, just a minute. Is yeah. Ronjan Wilhelm Conrad Ronjan? Mm -hmm. But see, what he did was he wanted to make his wife famous. Yes, seriously, right? He wanted to make his wife famous. So that's that's what we can think of. He must have said, "Okay, अच्छा एक काम करना ना come to my lab, right? अपने एक experiment करते हैं." And he called up his wife. Right. So she is Anna, right? Her her wife's name was Anna. And and he must have said that. Let's let's take one X-ray. She must be wondering what it is, right? Her name is Anna Bertha, Anna Bertha Ronjan. Now she was not knowing that she will be become Mrs. Anna Bertha Ronjan. She was totally unaware that she will be creating a history, right? What you are about to see is words. First radiograph, or the world's first official X-ray, which was taken, and this X-ray is still considered as one of the most valuable X-ray, the first X-ray, and this is the X-ray of hand of Anna Bertha, right? And and the wedding ring, the wedding ring, it became world famous. This one, so this is like world's. First X-ray, or the first radiographic image, and that is the true name: radiographic image. Right. So, so this is like then, and that's how she entered into the history, and and became immortal forever. So basically. When we talk about X-rays, we need to understand few characteristics of the X-ray. So that will make your understanding of X-ray just crisp clear. First thing first, it is the EMS. Right. This is electromagnetic spectrum. Right, electromagnetic spectrum. This electromagnetic spectrum means everything depends upon the wavelength, right? Wavelength, wavelength, length of one wave, right? Wave length, length of one wave, from here to all the way. This is called as crest. This is called as trough. Correct. From here to here, right? This is called as the wavelength represented by lambda. So that's the wavelength. Number of waves per second, right? Number of waves per second. That's what is called as the frequency. Right? Very basic principles of physics. Higher the frequency, lesser would be the traveling of distance. Makes sense. If we drive our car or our bike like this, 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 right? So obviously, it will be able to travel less distance, right? If we travel, if we move like this, bus, right? If we travel like this, so yes, we'll be able to travel for a longer distance. So higher the frequency, shorter the distance, right? Higher the frequency, shorter the distance. Shorter the distance. How we are utilizing this thing into our X-ray? Well, higher the frequency, that means its energy would be exhausted early, right? So here we are interested in can these X-rays penetrate through the body? So higher the frequency, 
less is the penetration power less is the penetration right less is the penetration which penetration that is which is passing through the body so how can we really change the frequency well that's what we'll see right how can we what exactly are the principles behind it so when we say electromagnetic spectrum right from the radio waves right all the way when we say that it is 98.2 to 99.1 all those frequencies right these are the frequencies radio frequency this is something which is measured in meters per second right and the that is the wavelength right and frequency is measured in hertz right hertz or h z or h z again name of the scientist right so higher the frequency as the frequency increases so when we have got complete spectrum all the way from here where there are radio waves right now this is a complete sequence radio waves then microwave infrared then visible light so even the light which is visible right visible anything which is less than that that is considered as infra infra means less infrared infrared is that frequency which is used in your remote controls so in your remote control when you press something to so the beam is going and it is striking the infrared sensor and, and it's making the changes right but we don't see that frequencies which are beyond our visible range they are all called as the ultra ultra say for example ultraviolet rays ultraviolet rays when they are coming from the top we don't see it even higher than that these are the x rays right obviously we can't see that even higher these are the gamma rays gamma rays and all the nuclear science or the nuclear bombs atomic bombs right when they emit certain specific frequencies so these these waves they are nothing but these are the waves these are all harmful to the body the reason behind it is that is when they pass through the cell right they that they, they evaporate the water content so immediately it leads to cell death right so that's why these rays they are super super dangerous this is the reason that it should be controlled with caution it should be controlled and used with caution Achha. taking back to some physics right very basic physics so one what is called as the atomic concepts right very simple thing extremely simple we know that in the nucleus right for any of the thing right in the nucleus so there would be there would be say protons right they are into the nucleus and there would be neutrons correct protons and neutrons so we call them collectively nucleus right? and surrounding it surrounding it there are orbits right there are orbits and these orbits they are having electrons these protons they are positively charged correct neutrons zero charge and these electrons they are negatively charged right so first orbit right then first orbit second orbit and and in that right in that say they they keep on you keep on getting all those electrons the way they move right so these are electrons electrons negatively charged the speed of light is vital because when we talk about electromagnetic spectrum the speed of light right they travel at the speed of light light speed right and that is represented as c c is 186000 miles per second right or 3 lakh kilometers per second this is the reason this is the unit which is used in say astronomy right space science when you want to measure the distance between the stars so 
the practical implementation that the moment you see that are wow, such a beautiful sunrise no forget about it right the sun rose before 8 minute and 22.4 seconds before this is the distance 8 minutes and 22.4 seconds before so as the sun rose right 3 lakh 3 lakh 3 lakh 3 lakh 3 lakh kilometers right 3 lakh 3 lakh 3 lakh 3 lakh light is traveling when light hits over here to our eyes right this is the sun right so mercury venus earth and we are on the number three right so then we see care a light has reached so now we see the sun is rising basically it is before eight minutes and 22.4 seconds before it has started right but the distance is so much with this logic right with this logic because this is my favorite subject so i'm going to give you something extra right this is earth this is earth the nearest star our nearest star alpha centauri right alpha centauri this is 3.4 light years 3.4 light years this is the distance right when the light keeps on traveling 3 lakh 3 lakh 3 lakh 3 lakh for one year the distance covered right that is called as one light year so if we go in exactly correct direction this nearest star after the sun right which will hit that will reach after three years and say almost 4.8 months five months right so that's the time which it would take right and from this the came there came the theory of relativity that is as you travel to the speed of light your biological clock slows down right and and so if if uh, we sit on a spaceship we start at the speed the speed of light we go and then we come back so let's consider three and a half years to go three and a half years to come back right when we come back our life would be increased by few minutes few minutes but on earth this is 2023 and when we'll return it would be 2030 this is the einstein's theory of relativity that how everything is in form of perception how how the speed and everything changes yes so many movies they can came on this right? but this is one of the very beautiful concept the trouble is only this much the current speed which we have achieved at the max right by by some of our satellites that is 80000 kilometers per hour 80,000 kilometers per hour. So we are way behind, right? Here we are talking about 3 lakh kilometers per second. This is 80,000 kilometers per hour because this tells us one more thing that C is equal to mc square that yes, it is possible E is equal to mc square, right? Energy is equal to mass into square of speed of light. That much energy can be generated. So by this logic, even one kilogram of coal is sufficient to supply energy to the entire world but it is not happening because most of the energy it gets wasted we just cannot convert it a hundred percent but that's what is called as the fuel efficiency okay so coming to this say if i say we live in milky way galaxy right we live, we live in milky way galaxy milky way galaxy By the way, this is one of my hobby. I've got two big telescopes, huge one, right? One is seven feet and, and another is computer controlled. So it can track the stars by itself. You can connect the laptop and that is uh, when we go for the photography, right? So this is Milky Way galaxy and distance from one point to another point is 1,20,000 light years. Even the core, right? Even the core, if you go like this, that is 30,000 light years. 30,000 light years. And we are sitting somewhere over here on the edge. Right? When we really look at these things, right? We feel that, see, as a, as a human being, we are so trivial. 
means forget about say we say that okay i am into this city and i am into this college and i am doing this and that then the city then the state then the country then the earth then our solar system then our milky way galaxy and there are such 36 galaxies imagine where are we right and people unnecessary they keep on keeping so much of ego right this is like we are not even like a grain but this is the beauty. This is the universe. Later on, I'll I'll show you my uh, those stato not stethoscope, my telescopes, right? Telescopes and few of my photographs. I got the Canon gear which can be attached with those telescopes, and then you can do the photography. Right? It's it's a great fun. Right? Moon, so it will look like as if you are walking on it. It looks so good. You can you know, Mount Olympus and all those mounts you can see very crisply. So moon is not as beautiful as we, we describe sometimes for our girlfriend, right? Moon is not that beautiful. It is with so many bumps and with, with so many irregularities. Okay. So let's start with the concept of which we all must know that whenever we talk about any of the element Right? There is always an alphabet given. Right? Say for example carbon. So we say it's C. This is what is called as the atomic symbol. Right? I know some of the things too must be known to you, but this could be like a refreshing thing. Right? As it will be used. Then when a number which is written over here, every element, we, we write it something like this, okay, over here it is 12. For carbon, if we write 12, so then we write it over here, 6. So what exactly is this 12, right? Normally represented as A, right? So A is nothing but atomic or the mass number, right? It is the mass number. And what mass number is? Mass. Mass means it is the mass of nucleus. And nucleus is consisting of what? Protons. So protons plus neutrons. Right, that is what is giving giving mass number. Simple. This number, which is at the lower side, which is represented by Z or Z, right? That is what is called as the atomic number. Right? Atomic number. And this number represents how many protons are inside. Right? So it is number of protons. But it is the game of this. It is the game. So when we say 12, 6 and, and this is the carbon. So we know that in case of carbon, there are 6 protons and there are 12 total number that is protons plus neutrons. So we can subtract from this atomic number and we can know that how many neutrons are there into the carbon. In this case, 6, 6, right? But that thing keeps on changing, right? Achha. So atomic mass when we say that it is like sum of protons and neutrons, right, in a single atom. And atomic weight is, is like another concept. It is what is called as the atomic weight, right. We saw two things, mass number first, proton plus neutron, atomic number that is number of protons. Then comes atomic weight. Now that atomic weight is the it is the weighted average, right, of the atomic mass, right. So, this is like atomic mass. It is the weighted average, weighted average. But weighted average of what? Weighted of average of that element, which is its natural isotope, which is stable, right. Weighted average of natural isotope, isotope. Now, we'll be discussing isotope just in a few minutes, but that will give the idea that what really happens in case of different type of isotopes, right? Say for example, when we say natural isotope, that means there must be some change. So, isotopes, right? Isotopes. This P, that means same number of protons. But that's the whole idea. Same number of protons. Right? 
different neutrons different neutrons and that would change the complete so say for example in case of hydrogen right in case of hydrogen and these are the various isotopes which are which are used for different purposes and and yes we'll be using it into our our radiology say for example deuterium something which was used for we, we learned it that you, when we talked about those fluid, right, extracellular and intracellular fluid. So, to measure that. So, for, so in case of hydrogen, right, we say H, H or H, right. So, when we have got 1, right, this was what 1, 1 was the combination of proton plus neutrons right proton plus neutrons so when it is one this is proton plus neutron over here it is one proton zero neutron right so this is what is called as proteum right this is what is called as the proteum then another one which is deuterium deuterium two deuterium so this is 2 in which case it is proton neutron 1 1 right so simple right and if this is deuterium so then when this is 3 so it is very rightly tritium tritium so in this case protons should be same right so here protons are 1 but neutron it becomes two so this is proton neutron and that's why we call that these are the isotopes right all these questions they are part of all these competitive exams right they ask these questions so just remember from this these numbers and when we'll be taking exam yes i'll be asking you such questions so that it becomes crystal clear right so do remember this proton proton right they are same but so they are isotopes iso means same right so same proton isotopes same protons right let's take another look at another property they this time they are called as isotones i need not even explain right because now same neutrons same neutrons right so same number of neutrons that's right so what would be different the only thing which can be different is protons so different different protons you might ask a question that why why we are not talking about uh, say electrons well because those electrons when they are moving right we can take a gun and fire and that electron would be knocked off that's what we'll be doing to produce the x-rays and that's what we'll be doing to produce various types of x-rays so something which will be used for x-ray chest when we'll say x-ray of skull so that would be different x-ray abdomen different patient is obese so we need those x-rays which can really penetrate through properly otherwise we'll be getting a complete blurred image and right? many times if the images are taken they are blurred out so that means it is exactly like photography and over here also the same concept of exposure will come that this x-ray is overexposed this x-ray is underexposed right now when you are taking the photograph you have got such a nice control nowadays cameras right they are like i mean cell phones they are less of the cell phone and more like the cameras so so advertisement should be like that that yes we have prepared a very nice camera and the one of the feature is you can even talk with it right so <laughs> now the cell phones they are like that such such heavy say sensors they are so over here it is completely same but see when it happens like this so we, we take the say carbon right so in case of carbon you will find that same number of neutrons right same number of neutrons and say you take the oxygen right when this is say this is c14 6 right and then oxygen it is 16 8 right 16 8 so immediately we know that here it is 8 
right? Because this is this is proton plus neutron, proton plus neutron. This is this is what? This is six. So in neutrons would be eight. This is eight. This will be eight. Neutrons would be eight. So that means they both are isotones. They both are isotones. Remember isotones, right? Same number of neutrons. So at least when when we have got this much information, we can figure out the whether they are isotopes or they are isotones. Previously, I thought that I, I'll take this thing at a later stage. But because it would hardly take another 5-7 minutes, but it's important. So that's why I'm keeping it. Next is about, say, isobars, isomer, but right now we won't be touching them. right? Because in isobars, it is the atomic mass which is same. Right? Chalo, let's, let's finish that part also, right? so that it, it gets completed. So isobars, right? Isobars. In this case, the total is same, right? So this means, this is interesting. The total is same. Total of what? We are dealing with protons and neutrons only and we are not talking about electrons. So obviously, protons plus neutrons, that total is same. The total is same. That doesn't mean that their proton and neutron numbers will be same. Different, different protons, proton numbers and different, different neutron numbers. Different neutron numbers. The total should be same, right? So same say oxygen, this is 16 and 8, right? But so this top value, the 16 should be same, say pick up the nitrogen, right, 16 and 7. So this number is same, this number is same. But now you know, this is what, this is number of protons. So, so completely different, completely different. Anna? So we have total same, but, but the rest of the things, they are completely different. So far, things easy, right? So in this case, this is so if we say proton plus neutron in this, it is 8 plus 8, right? 8 plus 8. In this, say proton plus neutron, right? This is 7 and this would be 9. Totally different. But they are isobars. But that's it. This much information should be known to you. Right? This is more than enough for, for tackling any of those questions which, which you might encounter. Apart from this, that when we'll talk about, say, some of the radionuclide procedure, we'll talk rest of the things about isomers, etc. at that point of time. One, one very basic formula, I, I hope you know it, which was given by Neil Bohr. Neil Bohr. That how many electrons will be into each of the orbit? Right? Because this is what it will be needed. Because what we'll do is, will actually fire right one electron from one orbit and as it will change its orbit it will be releasing energy and that energy would be nothing but the x rays that's what we'll be utilizing right so this is what really happens into the x ray machines so we have nucleus inside and which is positively charged because of protons right and then there are there are orbits right there are orbits there are orbits and on and on and on right so this will be like first orbit second orbit third orbit and all of them they are given the name k l m n right they are given the name this is like k this is like l this is like m then n so how many electrons will be there into th this entire thing is nucleus right this is not the first orbit nucleus so that's how we keep it huh so, how many electrons? Well, that is dependent upon only one formula, right? And that was by Neil Bohr. And it is 2 into n raised to 2. n is the shell number, right? n is the shell 
this is called as the shell, right? Shell 1, shell 2 or the orbit, shell or orbit, orbit number. Right? So in the first, so first orbit, so it would be 2, 1 raised to this, so it will be 2 electrons, right? 2 electrons. Second orbit, right? 2, 2 into 2, so there would be 8 electrons and so on. Fine. What would happen in this case? If it goes like this, that means this is electronically, right? This is electronically stable. If not, right, if there is one electron extra or one electron missing, right? So then it is what is called as the ions, right? When it is negatively charged or positively charged, right? This entire thing. We are interested in the energy. Energy. One another principle. When think it like so that we, we don't have to cram. And this is the same principle which we use in satellites. So think it like that in satellites, I'll, I'll take it like on this page. This is Earth. And there is one orbit which is called as the geostationary orbit. And in this geostationary orbit, even if you take this pen and you put it there, this pen will keep on moving around the, uh, around the earth on and on and on and on for infinite years. It will never come. Earth's gravity won't be pulling it down and it would not be moving even outside into the space. Right? It, this is what is called as the geostationary orbit where the balance the amount of pull of the X-rays and when the object is moving and is trying to fly away from the orbit or the fly away from the Earth is completely balanced. This is geostationary orbit and that's why this is the orbit where there is a parking problem. Everyone wishes to park their satellites into this orbit because koi kharcha nahi, muft, completely muft. Just small booster rockets are there, they, shish, right? they just fire and they keep in the orbit. Otherwise, either they are into low orbit or they are into the higher orbit. Now, when they are into the higher orbit, when they are into higher orbit, they require more energy because they always try to fly away from the Earth. Right? Because Earth's, Earth's effect is not that prominent. The gravitational pull is less. right? So, that's why they require higher energy so that they keep on moving. Around. So, higher orbit is higher energy. They are having higher energy. Lower orbits, lower orbits, lower energy. So, if we can figure out a method in which this electron, which is into higher orbit, if he jumps into this lower orbit, so he will say, Ke achha, over here, let's Suppose that units, right? Higher orbit is having 100 units of energy and in the lower orbit, it has got 50 units of energy. So, what would happen? This electron which is coming into lower orbit will say, okay, I can't handle this much energy. So, rest of the energy of 50 units would be released. But this is the principle. This is the principle how we are actually generating all those X-rays, right? So, in which what really happens that there is a cathode and then there is anode. Anode is because from cathode the electrons, right, they, they fire, they hit and then when they hit that plate, anode plate, right, which is a, which is like a target, right, tungsten target and, and it would release. I'll draw it for you. And this one is the filament. Obviously, this is a vacuum tube, right? So, here this is called as the cathode. So, it is heated, right? And this is the anode on which it will strike, right? So, this cathode filament, 
this is tungsten same filament right which is used in our light bulb right so this gets heated and this is the anode and this is a special surface because not everyone will be able to generate x-rays right not everyone this is a special surface and this anode which is a combination of tungsten and rhenium alloy right so it is the tungsten plus rhenium alloy rhenium right rhenium alloy tough structure even molybdenum right molybdenum that is also used so when these it goes right it strikes this anode and then whatever is coming out right whatever is coming out these are the x-rays and with the help of say focused uh, grid right that is what is called as the focusing cup you can direct these x-rays through a specific window and that's what is used for the purpose of x-rays right now because this anode if it is constantly bombarding right so then gradually this anode gets damaged so that's why now the newer machines are like they keep on rotating anode so it gives adds the durability right it adds the durability and uh, that's how and, and now to, there are so many methods which have come out in in the digital x-rays x-rays they are used but then there is a ccd charge coupled device so which takes it and converts it into the image and then with the help of computer you can even modify all the settings right so that is that is about the times now well, well you should really know because again these are like some questions because tungsten tungsten is the main element which is used right tungsten symbol its symbol right one of the question symbol its symbol is w right symbol is w name is tungsten and if not more just know its atomic weight right no need to go into the decimal things right that it is say 183.84 but even if you remember 183 it is fine actually it is exact is 183.84 that is the weighted average right so this is what should be useful do remember that international radiology day all such questions yes they are they are asked right so in nutshell we have the emitted electrons right from the cathode right these are the electrons which are emitted right they hit the anode they knock off one of the electron right which goes from higher shell to lower shell because outer shell electron is knocked off right so this is acting like a bullet right this is the nucleus right if there is there is one electron right thak right it it goes it is thrown out right and then there is change in the so these electrons they are knocked off these electrons they are knocked off so in order to say compensate right it jumps into lower orbit it is released because this process is occurring hundreds and millions of times so that's why there is production of right as it hits right there is production of x-rays right production of x-rays because of specific anode which we talked about that it is a combination of tungsten and rhenium alloy right also molybdenum is used so this is what is going inside the anode right and then we direct these x-rays with the technology and and that's what we use right? now when you do photography I I hope you you know what is aperture or what is exposure, right? That would be needed even when we'll be talking about the eye optics, right? So much of physics is involved. Think it like when you go into a theater, right? Cinema hall, right? Outside there is bright sun. As soon as you go inside immediately, right? You'll find everything is pitch dark. And gradually you start finding are log yampe bethe. And then you initially to right people are tuck 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 are seat, very seat, very seat. 
right? And then you find out, yeah, now everything is clear, which things are getting clear. Same thing is over here, right? It, in, in eyes, it is our pupils, right? They keep on, and then there is a light reflex, right? We, we, and then there is accommodation. So we keep on accommodating as per the light. Over here, when you take the x-ray or when you take a picture, this is this is your plate for what duration how long the shutter should remain open those who are into photography they must be knowing that there is a b mode b mode is when you really want to keep the shutter on when the light condition is very bad right you keep, want to keep the shutter open for a longer duration so that more light enters and and the plate is activated and you can you get a better picture otherwise underexposed means everything is blurred out right everything is blurred out so exposure rem remember exposure means how long how long it is a time based thing how long the light should be allowed should be allowed Right? That is the exposure time. Right? Achha. Because we are dealing with x-rays, we will be having only two factors. Because the moment now we will be talking about x-rays, x-ray chest, right? these factors, they will come into picture. We will be using two things. That is one, what is called as the KVP. KVP. Right? That KVP is what? It is kilo voltage. Kilo means thousand. Right, so now you know that when you take the X-rays, duck, right, big noise comes because there are transformers which pump the voltage into thousands of volt. So this is kilo voltage peak. Same way, when you go to MRI, right, you'll be given the soundproof headphones, right. So they they are noise cutters because otherwise, when the magnets, when this I move inside. Right? So, they create hell of a noise, right? So much so that in every MRI center, that right, they inside they put a plate that this sound may damage your ears, right? So, that's why that headphone, even when, when the patient is getting MRI, right, headphones are given because they make hell of a noise. So, in this, this is kilo voltage potential. So, when we say one kilo, kilo is thousand, right? So, one kilo volt is 1000 voltage right just for comparison our our normal electricity is 220 volts right our big power plugs which are which are like for ac etc they are also 220 volts but the ampere is more right they are 15 amperes normally we are using 5 ampere and those ac etc they are 15 ampere 15 ampere right big plugs because the power the strength is more so this is one kilo voltage that's the voltage which we'll be using for the x-ray tube and over here the diagnostic range which is called as the diagnostic range now you will be thinking that oh this much yeah it is that much it is 45 to 120 kilo volts this is what is used. That is at what strength those those electrons they will be running and hitting the anode, right? So this is what really depends because higher the power, more more the X-rays would be generated and more X-rays that means more light. Just think it like that. More X-rays that means more light. So if there is more light, so then right? If, if there is too much of light, this is overexposed. When things are overexposed, we won't be able to see anything. When it is underexposed, again, we won't be able to see the clarity. So, everything depends upon what's called as the contrast. Contrast. Contrast means the ability to differentiate two structures. Right? Because in x-rays, no one would say, Kacha, this heart is so beautiful, so let's paint it red and then, then lungs, they are very boring, so let's paint them black. No, everything, the entire game is of black and white. It is the grayscale. So, if you can generate, so that depends upon whether you want to see the bones, you want to see the soft tissues. So, that's how you have to smartly 
do these changes in nutshell it is the kvp behind all this katha whatever i did the idea is that when you read when you go for x ray when you see that tuck 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 right he is changing to 65 kvp okay so he is going for x ray chest right when the patient is obese so yes we require more power right so that so we want more contrast we have to change the kvp right so do remember kvp is what controls contrast right what controls the contrast contrast is the ability to differentiate between two structures this is one right we'll be utilizing this information as we'll see the x-rays also the second factor which we must know is changing the color mas mas right this is called as milli ampere milli ampere age actual meaning is milli ampere age right so the here also we say that 5 ampere right 5 ampere that current is so powerful over here this ampere that is very delicate that is very very delicate right so when we say 1 ampere is equal to how many milli amperes thousandth part right so 1 ampere is 1000 milli ampere right and we are dealing with that how much current you are supplying to x-ray tube right? so these are the two things one is the voltage and second is the ampere voltage is how many electrons are going and ampere is with what strength but that's the whole idea right so over here again the diagnostic range for the milliampere ages it ranges from 10 milliampere right remember this is 10 milliampere to 1200 milliampere right this is what two factors which will be giving say for example if you want to run this lamp right so we say lamp and so this is 220 volt 5 ampere you say i want to run geyser i want to run ac ha, ac to 15 ampere right you will require those those electrons which are tagda electrons right so that's how they really work another principle think it like this three substances are there right this is the most simplest explanation of the entire radiology three types of substance but just remember bone tough structure fat in between air very thin right so when we put the x-ray plate over here x-ray plate over here right and same amount of x-rays they are hitting same amount of x-rays they are hitting these substances bone it is so tough only some of the x-rays they will be able to pass through fat is relatively thin so bit more x-rays will be able to pass through air so is nothing it will allow almost all so all of them they will be able to pass through right clear so what would be the effect the effect is listen carefully if the x-rays they hit the plate if the x-rays hit the plate it becomes black right it becomes black and if x-rays cannot reach to the plate or if very less x-rays they hit the plate that thing is white that's why bones they appear white right bones appear appear white and black that indicates that it is the air right sometimes right? i don't know but in, in some civil hospital there are few few patients patients relative right they are super smart right they, and and invariably the x-ray which is lying over there they'll take the x-ray and they'll say Ki, achha, isme jo black hai na, wo sad gaya hai, white is all good right it is not like that right the bones they appear white and air wherever it is present it is black and now you know it very well that why lung fields they appear dark they appear black bones appear white and it is in between fat right fat or soft tissues right fat 
or soft tissues they appear something in between right same thing is converted into digital digital x-rays and things they go accordingly so what we learned from this that when we talk about kvp right in very simple words kilo volt peak right it is what is also called as the tube potential right tube potential that is the kilo volt which you will be giving to your tube so that x-rays I means so that the electrons they they are firing this is what this is related to penetrating power because powerful the rays penetrating power right so they will be able to pass through and higher kvp now this is very crucial right remember never ever forget this thing higher kvp that will lead to lower contrast right lower contrast why lower contrast we said that contrast means what right there would be say differentiation between the various shades so here there will be more number of shades the lower kvp lower kvp right so the blackness you can say the blackness right blackness that would be over here it would be higher right we'll see this thing practically right and even ma milliampere that is also related to it chalo from this point we understand the last part and then we start with the x-ray chest here is the plate here is the plate and as i said that this is one object and this is another object this is our light source right as the light light falls right as the light falls this object object a would be imposing a shadow which is quite of the similar size of the original object this distance is more so there would be magnification so it would be generating a bigger shadow right it would be generating a bigger shadow what about the edges what about the edges the edge of this object one right shadow of the object a that would be sharp correct while shadow of object b that would be diffuse this edge would be diffuse this is the principle of right when when we get that halo effect right as the distance increases right so here the image would be that sharp image would be a bit blurred we want to see sharp images so that's why interest the object of interest right object of interest should be near the plate but to remember this the object of interest that should be near the plate right with this so when we say x ray chest x ray chest p a view p a view stands for this is the x ray right here is the heart right in red okay though in x rays everything is black and white but no problems right so this means this is the heart this is the face this is the nose and that's the x ray plate and when the beam goes like this from posterior to anterior we call it postero postero anterior view postero anterior view right spine would be over here so spine won't be seen that clearly as compared to heart and the lung fields right which are lung fields which are over here so they will be seen more crisply x-ray chest that's why that's what we really want to see but 
if we wish to take go for the lumbar region right want if someone is having back pain so then the direction would change it will become ap right because then this spine would be near the x ray plate and then we take the x ray so they will be seen more clearly fine this much is is enough to start with our x ray chest and for that what i have done is i have kept almost most of the things crisp clean ready to ready for you so same thing i'll i'll send it to you so that we we can discuss more we have to write less and we can discuss more <laughs> so this is x ray chest projections projections means which are the various type of x rays and and this is with all those examples the commonest one this is pa view postero anterior view most common yeah this is most common you know this now the direction of beam it goes from posterior to anterior the reason that we want to see those objects which are in front in sharp contrast right we want to see them sharply x ray beam where it is centered right x ray beam which is centered remember this right see the patient patient is you are watching the back of the patient right and back of the patient right here is here is the patient right and and these will be the scapula so inferior angle of scapula this line that will be the point where you really want to center the beam right so this is where you will send inferior angle of scapula correct the level this is the level that is the level where you will focus this is t7 spinous process or t8 body just to know right this is t7 T eight, right? T seven, T eight. Now comes that point. You want that things should be seen crisp, clean, right? So you want low penetration, right? You want low penetration. You don't want ke dhar 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 all the X-rays they should pass in because when they'll pass, most of the X-ray would pass. It will create the complete thing black. Right, it would be overexposed. You want to see calcifications. You want to see those small, small shadows. Right, you want to see things in more detail. So that is where you want to have a look at things which are which can be seen clearly. You you want to differentiate between various. So that's where you'll be using the low KVP, right? Low KVP. As you decrease the KV, you will find that so many structures they can be seen. Because when you increase the KV, they are so powerful, right? So it is like either hit or not, right? So they will be there will be more blackness. So this is the low KVP normally used. High KV you want to use only in certain cases, right? When these are like some hidden areas of lung field, we'll come to that. But this is normally. That's the normally what you will do. Watch this X-ray, right? This is how it really looks like, right? A well-balanced, proper X-ray, right? Now, in this, as discussed, right? So many small points to see. See, this is this is what in between. See the spine. These are the bones, right? These are the bones, so they are white. See the ribs, right? These are the ribs so nicely seen because bones. Lung field, lung field that is dark, right? Because it went through and through. Heart is appearing almost white. Yes, because it is not so, right? The heart, it is big, filled with blood and then this entire soft tissue is appearing as one. So that's like See the abdomen, so thick, so it is almost behaving like a bone, right? So this is when the say, thickness when is more, right? Watch for this surrounding part. Watch for this surrounding part outside the body, right? It is all black because outside the body it is air, so it goes through and through, and it would be generating this picture, right? Watch for this portion, this one, right? This one, this one. 
this one. This is trachea, right? See this shadow, right? So that's trachea. This trachea is telling us that trachea. Now you know what is mediastinum, right? Trachea is part of mediastinum. So if there is a, any, any, any mass and it is pushing, so then you will find that trachea would be something like this. And we say that there is mediastinal shift to left side. Right? So there must be some mass on the right side or there must be some fibrosis. So fibrosis, so it is pulling, pulling, right? So that's what we understand. So here trachea means it is talking about mediastinum. Mediastinum. Right? If you can perceive that this is how the our all-time favorite aorta is going to go, right? Because as such aorta is going in taking just 180 degree turn, right? So it is going from anterior to posterior, yesterday we saw. But during that process, right, this is, it will be giving some prominence and then it will go like this. This is what is called as the aortic, aortic knuckle, right? This is knuckle, right? This is like knuckle. So it looks like as if this is because of aorta, right? It is doing this aortic knuckle. So another view, AP view, entero-posterior view. This is for critically ill patient. As we discussed, that we can't tell if the patient is in coma or patient is lying, patient has got fracture, patient cannot move, he's lying, so then we just insert the x-ray plate underneath the him, portable x-ray from the top, thak, we'll take the x-ray. So this is critically ill patient and when you are taking this portable x-ray unit. So direction of beam will be from entering anterior to posterior, that is AP view, right? This is AP view, heart is in front. So if the heart is in front, using the same logic, heart is in front, so when it will be imposing shadow on the X-ray plate, it would be enlarged, correct? It will be enlarged, so unnecessary, it will show as if the heart is enlarged, not to worry, right? we have got the solution for it. See the differences, you must remember them, but so logical, you will always remember them. PA view. Seen in periphery of the thorax. Here it is. Say scapula, right? If you really carefully watch the scapula, that's how they are looking like, right? That's how they are looking like. The scapula, they are not overlapping, they are on the periphery. They are on the periphery because that's how you take the x-ray, right? The x-ray plate is here, right? You say, okay, stand like this. So that, right, stand like this, this, right? Shoulders raised and as if you are hugging the x-ray plate, right? So those, those scapula, they are seen in the periphery of thorax, far. In AP view, right, patient is lying. So those scapulas, they will be overlapping. They will be overlapping. They will be overlapping the lung fields. This is very important. Right? Very important. This is one. Another thing. The clavicles. This is also easily. You can differentiate it crisp clean. They project over the lung fields. Because when you do it like this, right? these clavicles, so they are not going to move. right? They will remain over there. See the clavicles. These are the clavicles. Right? So these clavicles, they project over the lung fields here and here. Right? And what about this? But the angle changes, right? So in that AP view, hands are on side, right? Straight away it is the it is the X-ray which is taken. Clavicles they are exactly like this. And see, these are the clavicles. Right? They are above the apex of lung fields. This is fine, right? So this is also easy. The third thing, 
about the ribs. Now, this is what you have to understand. The ribs. This is a rib. This is a rib, right? Let's let's draw. This is a rib. Right? And this is connected with vertebra. So this one would be the posterior end. This one would be the anterior end. Anterior end, then there will be the costal cartilage. Where are the anterior ends? To see this, we, we go back to our this extra. And I am removing this, right? So that we watch. And I am zooming it. See if you can appreciate. I am just drawing one rib. This one. One rib. Right? That's the rib. That's the rib. That's the rib. Right? And which is going all the way. All the way over here. Or, right? So this is one rib. This posterior part. This would be the posterior part portion and this one would be the anterior one. We said that the structure which is near to the plate remains in sharp focus. Postero anterior PA. So obviously anterior part that is close to the plate. So anterior end of the rib. This would be seen better in PA view because it is near. Make sense? Right? Watch it. Watch it. Removing it. Zooming it. And. Ha. In this x-ray. I'll mark. I'll mark. The anterior end. See the anterior end. Right here it is. It is. It is. It is. It is this. And it is. It is. This is this here. Now lower rib. Here one, here is one, another one, this one, this one, right? See the anterior ends, they are seen so clearly. These are the anterior ends. Now let me remove this, right? Watch it. Can you see, right? If I, if I draw on the entire rib, this is too thick, too thick. Why too thick? Here is this rib. This is the anterior rib. This is the anterior portion of rib. The anterior portion of rib. Anterior portion. Anterior portion. And anterior portion. Watch from the opposite side. Right? See? Here it is. One rib. Here it is. Here is the, another one. This one. See this one. See this one. Right? These are all anterior ends. What we are watching over here. These are. These are posterior ends. Right? The posterior ends which are related to, to the vertebra, right? These are posterior ends, posterior, 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 right? These are the posterior ends, clear? Now, let's erase all of them and then see. This, 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 we remove. Now, see anterior end and posterior ends, right? Anterior ends, they are seen, compare it with this. Can you see the anterior ends? So difficult. Because this is AP view. Right? So, anteroposterior. So, posterior ends, they will be seen more clearly. Anterior ends, so they will right not Right? We are, though they are seen, some of the ends, but they are blurred. Because they are far. Right? So, that's another difference. That's the another difference. That posterior rib, right? This is distinct. <laughs> Wait. Anterior ribs, they are seen more clearly. Posterior ribs, right? they are seen more clearly. This is error. Right? So now it is fine. The anterior end which is near, simple. The thing which is near, it is seen clearly. 
and that's the difference this is pa view and this one is ap view that's where the marker is put normally you will find a marker like over here right there is a marker so these are the differences right where you see it and don't forget this false cardiomegaly cardiomegaly is enlarged heart is enlarged heart so when the heart is enlarged <clears throat> that is seen in ap view because heart is far see this is the heart this is normal and this is the heart which is looking so big same patient right this is looking so big so here it looks like that heart is enlarged which is not this is a false cardiomegaly some universal convention it is necessary when you take the x-ray you need to remember and and when one of the question which was asked at that point i said okay, yes we'll discuss when we'll be taking the when we'll be taking the x-rays right universal convention that means these are the rules which you must follow one is for the pa view commonest erect posture so patient must be standing in suspended and inspiration why so suspended and inspiration that is what hold so that's why you will tell the patient chalo saans lo and right when the patient is breathing we say stop right and then as the patient stops and what we will watch whether his shoulders they are moving right if he is moving you say no again right otherwise your image would be blurred so deep inspiration hold you watch that his shoulders are steady thak right you take the x-ray and split second x-ray is taken tube to the patient right tube to the patient because this x-ray machine right that tube is flexible you can aage piche you can move it so here is the patient right and when you center because there is a light beam right which you can use for centering and that's the tube you adjust right and then you take the x-ray right there is there is a stand and the plate would be lying over here digital or analog right analog means the physical x-ray would come digital means it will be transferred to the computer and from computer you can go send it for the print and it comes so but whatever right technology is the same for the x-ray production so this is what is called as the tube this distance should be 6 feet now here it is why we said that suspended and inspiration why right we can have, we could have said ke theek hai normal breathe stop and take the x ray now see the logic behind it is this is what this is alveoli right surrounding these alveoli surrounding these alveoli there are blood vessels capillaries there are multiple alveoli so there would be multiple capillaries when you breathe in air would be filled into these alveoli so they would expand so all these blood vessels they will be dur dur right they will go away they will spread across right and when you breathe out so they will all be clubbed together right? because now the alveoli are empty so they will all consolidate together right this is the reason why it is taken now here is the case right this is morning right still senior residents they have not arrived and a patient comes and this patient and this patient is subjected for the x ray why because he came for the health certificate athlete right he came for the health certificate x ray is taken and immediately he is said no boss we cannot give you fitness certificate because your lungs are consolidated right see see over here right so much of consolidation he said the chances are very high that you have got some infection so that means and also see the heart right so they say ki you have got cardiomegaly there is bilateral lower consolidation right we cannot see the diaphragm lower lobes are badly congested right no nothing can be done right and this is the thing he said ki theek hai abhi seniors aayenge baitho this is definitely a pa view no doubt about it look at 
look at the clavicles, right? That is fine. X-ray was taken correctly, right? Clavi scapulas, they are not seen into the lung fields. And we can see the anterior portion of the ribs very clearly. So things are pretty fine, right? There is no error. See the anterior ends. We can see it nicely. Okay. At 9 o'clock, right, the department starts officially. At 9.30, once again, the x-ray is taken. And, and this is good, right? Within, within two hours, patient has improved so much. Everything is fine, right? We can see the dome of the diaphragm, right? Heart is completely normal, right? What jadu, right? What happened in two hours, right? Completely normal. Mm -hmm. Nothing much. The reason is, when the x-ray was taken, right, so it was not in deep inspiration, suspended deep inspiration. So when in expiration, when it is taken, so lungs are not filled with air, right, basal portion. So this is least filled, there would be, this is the logic, crowding of vessels as no air. And unnecessary, it appears as appearance of basal consolidation. Nothing, because this portion was missed, suspended and inspiration. That's why this is considered as so important, right? Because this thing can give you so many false results. Because And now if the lungs, they are, they are collapsed, right? So unnecessary, the heart occupies and it looks like cardiomegaly. The moment... It was full deep inspiration, suspended inspiration. See, it is completely fine, completely normal, all good. Right? That's why those universal conventions are to be remembered. Is there any condition in which you deliberately take X-rays in expiratory phase? Uta star. Pneumothorax, right? Now, this pneumothorax is like a pathology. So, just, you know this part that pneumothorax means air has entered into, into that space which is between, that is the interpleural space, between the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura where there is only fluid. If the air enters into it, you call it pneumothorax. And where the air enters into it, that means there is that, that attachment, it goes away. Right, So that now, this parietal pleura is not pulling the visceral pleura because there is no fluid inside. So the lung, who is always lazy, always want to collapse, he collapses. And when that collapses, right, so this is the outer. Now the lung border is this and it is this portion, this portion which is cold, black, totally unromantic and that thing where you can see the edge of the lung. And this is what is called as the pneumothorax, right? So during the expiratory phase, this would be more marked. So when we'll be discussing pneumothorax, yes, we'll watch it in more detail. Foreign body aspiration, if someone has swallowed something, right? Some foreign body aspiration and it has gone into or the food or anything which has entered into the lung field. So at that point, you are more interested in, you are more interested in that is there any foreign particle which has entered, right? So that thing would be more seen clearly against this contrast because foreign particle, that would be causing a very sharp shadow. So I'll show you later on few of the x-rays. Say if there is a coin, so that coin is seen so crisply because coin, this is an artificial object, right? Any of the artificial object will be having beautiful margin because it is artificial, it is not part of the body. So that's why it is it is posing clear cut shadows many of the piercings right many of the piercings if there is locket into the air if there are coins into the pocket and if you forget to tell the patient to remove all those things all such decorations they they appear in the x-rays right and their images they are crisp clean absolutely clean so that is one then obstructive airways bronchial asthma emphysema Right? That is what we'll see when, when we'll be discussing these pathologies. And the diaphragmatic palsy, this though you know, diaphragmatic palsy, when the diaphragms, they are paralyzed, right? When they are paralyzed, we know that during the quiet breathing, right? 
in it is it is the diaphragms they go low right the diaphragms they go low and and you breathe in and then the diaphragms when they are relaxed they go up and we breathe out right so here when you see the flattening of those diaphragms because when they are paralyzed you won't be able to see them properly right see this is one simple explanation uh, next time i'll be showing you some other this black background is much better what i feel is anyway so just see this here it is that the heart which we have drawn right heart which has been drawn this is where Right from the aorta, it aorta goes like this and it goes like this. That's the aorta. And see, these are the branches, right? These are the branches, the brachiocephalic, right? Then common carotid, left common carotid and left subclavian. And it imposes this shadow, right? This is the aortic, aortic arch, thick, aortic arch. <coughs> sorry aortic arch then that one is pulmonary trunk and we have got this portion this you must know huh? this portion i'm marking it this portion it is the left atrium left atrium so when the left atrium is enlarged right when the left atrium is enlarged it would be become like this right now, in which condition left atrium would be enlarged? Well, left atrium would be enlarged if there is any blockage, right, outside. Yeah, this is PA view. Definitely, this is PA view. So, here it is, right, our heart, right, heart. And this is the left atrium. This valve is mitral valve, mitral valve, right, this is mitral valve. When there is mitral stenosis, that means this valve, right, is not opening, it is stiff. So this means this left atrium has to work so hard to push the blood into the left ventricle. So this left atrium, he goes to gym and he becomes enlarged. When he becomes enlarged, this is the portion which it acquires, right? He is enlarged. When left atrium is enlarged, it leads to an X-ray. It leads to straightening of the left heart border. Simple, right? Because I'm writing it here, straightening straightening of left heart border so when you see this straightening of left heart border first impression because see aorta is going to give the, that knuckle right pulmonary trunk is going to give that curve then below is the left ventricle that curve is already there but in between it is the left atrium this portion is formed by the left atrium so this left atrium this left atrium, when it is enlarged, so it will fill up that space and the entire border would be straightened. Very important. Straightening of left heart border, right? Commonest mitral stenosis. It is because this wall is, is stenosed. So left atrium is enlarged, right? Okay. Then, say, watch for, watch for this, yeah diaphragm no need to explain right diaphragm this one this one is the left dome of diaphragm and this one is the right dome of diaphragm which you can see very easily this portion right now because you have seen dissection you'll be able to appreciate it very cleanly that that is this thing is inferior vena cava right inferior vena cava so this is the angle the angle between the diaphragm and the heart right Achha. on the on the right side this is right atrium right this is right atrium this is left ventricle this is left atrium right this is left atrium where is right ventricle right ventricle is in front right ventricle is in front so that's why we are watching from front we won't be able to appreciate the right ventricle right 
this one, this is easy. This is superior vena cava, right? Superior vena cava and rest of the, there are bones, right? We'll, we'll keep on watching more and more things, but this, ah, this one, very nicely seen, a trachea. So, which will be giving us the idea for whether there is any mediastinal shift or not. Fine. Gradually, we'll keep on adding more and more number of points. But now, when you'll watch the X-ray, first thing you'll watch is the trachea center, right? Can you see the aortic arch, right? Is the heart into its normal shape like this, a smooth, graceful curve, right? This curve. Right, that means left atrium is not enlarged. Left ventricle, right and and then can you see the dome of the diaphragm properly? Right, pass this much to start with. Now we move on to the third projection, and that is what is called as the that is called as the lateral view. Lateral view. Right? Three important findings. One what is called as the retrosternal lucency. Retrosternal lucency. This is sternum. Sternum. Whenever the word lucency comes, right? This is whenever the word lucency. Lucency means blackness. Right? Lucency means blackness. So, and it is said that retro sternal lucency, this is what must be seen. One point. This is just behind the sternum. Can you see the blackness? Right? That's the first point. Retro sternal lucency. Second, retro cardiac lucency. Now it is easy. This is this is heart. Correct. This is heart. Retro cardiac lucency. Whenever it comes to lateral x ray, immediately watch for these two points first because it will give you the idea that is the exposure proper or not. Third important thing, right? So, this is retro sternal and the retro cardiac. Hmm. Third thing, third point. Watch the vertebral column. This you must appreciate that from top to bottom, the lucency. Lucency means blackness. Lucency means darkness, right? Darkness, blackness. This blackness must increase, right? Watch over here. And you have to watch on this particular line, on this line. See, for the top vertebra, so they are top uh, the vertebra so they are barely seen right they are almost white as we come down we come down they be, are becoming black 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 more and more black right let's remove all of this and then you see it correct this is when the lucency is increased the blackness of those vertebra it is in, seen clearly right as it is increasing so that's the third point along this line right that's the third point for any of the x-ray Lateral extra chest, you must see this. Here it is, right? Things. See this point. Where is the right ventricle? Right ventricle is here. Never ever miss this point, right? See, because right ventricle is in front. So, obviously, when we are taking the x ray from the side, so it will project some, right? So, that's the thing which we see. This is sternum. Right, so right ventricle is in front. Good. Manubrium, sternum, they are easy. We can figure it out. Right. Trachea, trachea. See the trachea, right? That air, right? Here things are overlapped, but when we'll be watching those so many X-rays, it will be more clear, right? But so far, so good, right? Then that is a posterior part, scapula. Ha. Ah. Left atrium, left atrium. This left atrium is posteriorly situated, right? But as such, it is posteriorly, but on left side, it is slightly projected. 
but as it enlarges right it will be leading to straightening of left heart border but something more happens just behind just behind in this i think they have not mentioned i'll i'll, I'll draw it right because i am trying to explain one very good concept and can you see this border structure which is going all the way right I, i'll draw can you figure out which structure is this which tube could it be this one what could it be which is going all the way down now to it is more than enough hint is given right which structure is it when it is going from top aorta aorta to is dost is this one aorta is to this one what else what else could it be because see this is lateral na in lateral to aorta is taking full turn in fe vena cava in fe vena cava do so much right kurat remotely i'll hit you yes siddhant now to you are on my hit list trachea trachea going in abdomen come on esophagus that's right it is the esophagus theek hai na see because see aorta why not aorta i don't delete it that's okay <laughs> right that's fine so trachea right trachea takes full turn trachea takes full a uh, trachea kya aorta aorta takes full turn right 180 degree so all the way from anterior it goes posterior right so it takes full turn so that is fine in fe vena cava to it is barely seen into into thorax hai na trachea would end just at the level of angle of lui right so the moment you see left bronchus right bronchus bas khatam baat over right because that is the point where trachea has divided trachea's function is over trachea is seen only in this much area so that is done right so it is this esophagus which is passing just behind this left atrium so now watch it when the left atrium enlarges so it will push the esophagus back correct when the when the atria left atrium is enlarged it will push the esophagus back and this is where you will be able to see when you will be doing the barium study right you give the barium barium means this is this is like a fluid and it is radio opaque so you tell the patient ke chalo muh mein bhar ke rakho you take the lateral x ray you take the x ray and when you find that esophagus instead of going like this right it is going like this taking the turn right and now you know that on plain x ray it is straightening of left heart border and on the lateral x ray on barium or even on normal you see a graceful curve of esophagus that means 100% left atrium is enlarged this is the pressure effect right so that's how you you can see this is just one of the thing as we'll progress we'll see more and more things right and this one is gastric bubble gastric bubble gas gas in the stomach right it is the gastric bubble and when we say bubble what you watch this thing is called as the air fluid level right remember this this is a round space and in which there is fluid fluid always takes the gravity right this patient is standing so that fluid would be like this right so this is what is called as the air fluid level correct this is air fluid level so this is the fluid and this one is the air and this whole thing is called as the gastric bubble right but if there is air between diaphragm just below the diaphragm right which is not part of the stomach so then it is different chilarity syndrome right we'll see that that how the air if it is just under the diaphragm and taking the entire shape of the diaphragm acha another one is lateral decubitus decubitus means when the patient is 
sleeping, right? Is lying down. And lateral decubitus means on the lateral side, right? On on the lateral, so from side. For this is diagnosis, for the diagnosis, this DX means diagnosis of minimal pleural effusion. Pleural effusion, that is when into the pleural space, there is fluid, right? So, huh, uh, I think one, another thing, which I must tell you over here. This angle, this angle, this is between diaphragm, this is the angle between diaphragm and costal margin, right, and costal margin. So that's why this angle is called as the costo diaphragm is phrenic, costophrenic angle. Also called as CP angle, CP angle. Now this is the most dependent position, most dependent, lowest, right? So whenever there is fluid collected into the pleural cavity, right, into the pleural, that fluid would trickle down over here and it would obliterate this angle. So, this angle instead of this sharp, now it would be filled up and it would look like this. And when we say obliteration of costophrenic angle or the CP angle, that is one of the indication of pleural effusion. That is the fluid has is getting collected into that space. But when there is minimal pleural effusion, sometimes means we need to get at least 50 ml of fluid before we start watching the costophrenic, that is this CP angle which is obliterated, right? So here it is, right? That's the trachea. This is pleural lining. That's a lung. And when in this area, when there is fluid collection, right? So that is fluid between pleural space. That is the pleural, pleural effusion. Right. To see minimal fluid, this would be the position. This is what is called as the decubitus position, right? On the lateral side, patient is lying on one side and then the head is kept like this, right? And this is the marker, right? That is inferior angle of scapula, right? And the patient is immobilized. It's not so that this patient should not means run away without paying the fees but because we need to immobilize the patient and then the x-ray is taken right when you take the x-ray you will watch because see the fluid would gravitate right fluid would gravitate and you will be able to watch that fluid level you'll be able to watch that fluid level right so that's the whole purpose of to find minimal Pleural effusion. The next is oblique angles, right? Oblique angles. This is for same sided rib fracture because when you take at an angle, so that particular fracture, if there is a fracture, the x ray plate, you want that that broken piece, right? That should be near to the x ray plate. So that's why you adjust the angle and then you take the x ray. This is for same sided rib fracture. Obviously, that side should be near to the x ray plate. Rest is all easy, anterior oblique or the right or left anterior oblique. Right anterior oblique. Right anterior oblique, when the right side is near, so for the evaluation of sternum, esophagus in barium swallow, right? Left sided, these structures, aorta, aortic window, they are on the left side. So we will be interested that that side should be nearer to the plate, right? So here it is, right anterior oblique. So this is the right side. This is the left side. So right side should be nearer, right? So here is the right side, which is nearer. So right-sided structures, they can be seen clearly. This is the left-sided structure. So left-sided structure, they should, they'll be seen more clearly for these obliques, right? RAO and LAO. This is also called as the lordotic view or the apicogram, which is you are taking at an angle, 
right? This is for the middle loop pathology so that there is minimal overlap, right? And this is also for the apex. Now we know that in anatomy, we saw that apex of the lung, this is overlapped by the clavicle and the first rib. So when you when you take an, at an angle, right? So that overlap would go away and you'll be able to see it more clearly, right? So whether you say a lordotic view or a picogram, basically you want to see the apex so that these apex of the lungs, they should not be overlapped by first rib and the clavicle. So you give it an angle and you'll be able to see it with much clarity. Right, so this is the beginning of the journey, right? Journey to great diagnosis has just started. So hang on and there would be next session in which we'll be watching multiple x-rays only with all these things considering as the base. So with this basic knowledge, then we'll keep on proceeding for for now onwards, there would be x-rays almost for every every session, right? Uh, so when we'll be discussing heart, next week is the heart, right? Next week is the heart. So as usual, first we'll be going for the heart dissection, right? And then, so this would be the order. We'll be going for dissection of the heart, right? Dissection. We'll see all the, all the parts, all the valves, everything in its real sense, cutting and watching it. Second, we'll also be touching the part of embryology because it is closely associated, right? It will make our understanding much better because then we have to go for congenital anomalies, right? Congenital anomalies. That's what we'll see. Now, we'll not stop at this point. We'll parallelly pick up the electrical conduction system. So this electrical conduction system, which is the foundation for ECG, right? So we'll take that. And during congenital anomalies, we'll definitely see the X-rays, we'll see CT, we'll see MRI, we'll see angiographies. And as a solution that whenever there is any problem, so what are the types of surgeries, right? Or what are the prosthetic valves, artificial valves, right? What are they, right? We'll watch those images. We'll see that how they really function. And obviously the pacemakers, right? Very hot topic. So yes, we'll take that pacemaker also. Right? So it would be a combination of so many things. And that's what we'll do. We'll start next week from Monday, right? So we stop at this point and, and wish you a very happy weekend and we meet on Monday, same time, all right? So thank you so much. And take care. Bye-bye. Revision? You want revision? But it would be too long, right? Because we have covered a big... Asha, let's do one thing. I'm, I'm, putting, I'm putting both these files, right? You just go through it. And, uh, and next time, right, we'll, we'll take a part of this thing as a revision. Okay? So let me save this thing. Saved. But yeah, surely go through both of these files today only. Thank you and take care. Bye-bye.